Hey everyone, my name is Bradley Pearson, and today we're going to be discovering our distant cousins through Facebook. And go. So there's a million different reasons why someone might want to do this. They might be trying to simply connect with family. They might be looking for photos, documents, or stories about a specific ancestor. They might even be trying to find someone who could be DNA tested to prove or deny biological relations. And they might even just want to connect with their biological family. So it's important to start with an objective in mind. Once you have an objective in mind, you're going to need to do some research as well. And usually this takes the form of traditional descendancy research, where you're going to start at an ancestor and work your way down. This usually takes using vital statistics, census records, probate records, land records. But the one thing that you'll find is that the paper trail can only take you to a certain point. So as you get closer to living people, it becomes a lot harder to find individuals and families due to privacy. So we really have to work with what we have. A really good place to get to is the 1940 US Census especially if you're trying to find your American relatives. The only downside is that you'll only really be able to find people who are about 80 years or older, and hopefully they're still alive. Another really good resource to finding people who are still living is obituaries. Usually if you can find an obituary, it will include all the names of their children, sometimes siblings, grandkids, and that'll give you a lot of names of living people that you can start to search for. So how do you find this information? Simply using Google. So for example, if I know that I have a cousin named John Vogelpohl, I'll put his name into quotation marks and it'll only pull up results using those exact words. Also, sometimes you'll find that when you click on a link, the website is broken and no longer exists. If you click this little button here, you'll be able to view a cached version of it, which shows what was there before. Now, one thing that's really important to remember is the demographics. Usually contacting older relatives is better. You'll be able to find someone who knows more, they might have photos, and there'll be a closer DNA relation to you. For me, I usually try to target this generation, but there have been times where contacting a grandchild has helped me get to grandpa who might not be on social media. Also, location is super important. People in Europe, I find, are not as easy to find as someone who is living in America. It becomes even harder if there's a language barrier, but it's not impossible, especially with Google Translate. If you're trying to find someone young, you might use a platform like Instagram, although it's a little bit difficult to find them using just their name. Facebook is a little bit more helpful because people usually put their name as their profile so you can more easily search for them. I want to show you guys how I used Facebook to find distant cousins and get family photos. So I had a great aunt Hannah. She was my great great grandmother's sister and my family moved up to Canada and left the family in Minnesota. They were really close though still and kept contact through letters. And somehow I only had about two photos of Aunt Hannah and it was from when she was really young. And so I was intent on trying to find living relatives to get more photos. So first of all, I learned everything I could about Aunt Hannah and her family. And I was surprised to find that instead of just having these two children that I knew about, she also had a third who wasn't listed. I was even more surprised that after searching his name, he was still living. By searching his name on Google, I was taken to a page called White Pages, which is basically like the phone book online. There, it listed a bunch of people with his same name, though I was able to go through them and find the one that had the right family members listed with it. Also, he was living in the right place at the right time. So with his name and some of his close family members' names, I searched him up on Facebook. One thing you can do when you're trying to find someone on Facebook is search their name and then you can come over to this side and click on city, add a city that they you think they live in, 
Um, if you know anything about their previous education or their work, you can also include that, and it's possible that they'll show up. You might have to go through a bunch of results, especially when you're working with common names, but often you'll be able to find someone who has a photo up that you might recognize, or they might have other family members in their friends list, which identify that it's the right person you're looking for. So as you can see, I contact him, him right away. When you go to make an initial contact, it's really important to be brief and non-threatening. Simply state who you are, introduce yourself, and ask if it's the right person. So I messaged him and I said, hey Bob, I was doing some family history for the Vogelpol side of the family tree and I was looking into my Aunt Hannah's side. I was shocked to see that she had another son named Robert and I was more surprised to see that you're still around. I have some family photos and would love to share them with you. Do you have any photos of your mom or dad or the Vogelpol side of the tree? Thanks. In this case, I knew I had the right person, so I didn't waste my time in asking if it was. But that can be a really powerful way to just introduce yourself. Because Bob is an older person, he actually doesn't use Facebook too often, so he didn't answer right away. I ended up going back to his friends list and finding his daughter in one of them and sent her a message. I decided to use another tactic by sending family photos. I included, this is Aunt Hannah and my great grandmother Lizzie Vogelpohl Schmidt, they were sisters, and sent the messages. When I first started contacting people through Facebook, I was really aggressive by saying exactly who I was, exactly how I was related to them, and by coming off a little bit too strong. I quickly learned that a lot of people don't even care exactly how you're related. And I also learned that sometimes you can have bad experiences. One time I found a relative on white pages and it gave me her phone number. So I quickly called her up and started asking her questions and she got so flustered and upset. I learned over time that it's better to make subtle, non-threatening introductions and then to work towards your goal. I was lucky with my cousins here because immediately they responded by saying, my dad would love to talk to you. Do you want to send your phone number so you can talk to him? Or would you like me to send a friend request from him and you can talk through Facebook? On the phone is better for him. Because talking over the phone was a little bit more comfortable for him, I gave him a quick call and then asked if we would be able to video chat. His family was able to set him up on the video chat and I was actually able to talk to my great grandmother's cousin who no one knew about. It was so exciting because they brought the whole family around and when I told them that I was looking for family photos, they pulled out a thick family album. I was lucky enough that they told me they'd send it in the mail right away so I could get scanning it. And they did this because I had sent them photos before and they knew that they could trust me. I received the album, found tons of photos of Aunt Hannah and other members of the family too. It was probably one of the most exciting things that's happened to me in doing family history. And had I not tried to contact living relatives who I had no idea even existed, I totally wouldn't have found this discovery. Living relatives can help us so much. And if we do some research and try digging in modern creative ways, we'll be able to discover so much more and connect with our families.